G'day folks, welcome to another exciting episode of Learn to Paint TV. Rod Moore here with you again and got something a little bit different for you again this week. This week we're going to paint a scene that I found on Google Maps. I was playing around with Google Maps, having a bit of a look at uh, an area of France called Brittany, which is to the west of France, northwest, and uh, found these beautiful little village scenes and so on, and I thought, wouldn't it be interesting to pick out a, a photo from Google Maps and, and to paint that one. So that's what we're gonna to do today. We've got this nice little scene here, and I like this one because it's got strong shadows through here, and then you've got the church here, it's all lit up in the sunlight, and then you've got some interesting perspective uh, as well. You've got these distant little um, stone buildings to either side of the main subject, which is a church. So I think this is gonna be an interesting uh, subject to paint. I'm gonna start off with a little flat brush, little bristle hair flat brush, only a small one. And I've got ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson or permanent crimson. And as you can see, my blue has run, but that's okay. It has a tendency to do that. And we're gonna start out doing our drawing, which is gonna be our step one. And um, the way we'll do that is to swish the brush around in some water, get these two paints, which are currently doing a merger, okay? So we just want a bit of water in there at this stage, just to loosen up that paint for drawing purposes. Now, this is an interesting, interesting uh, subject to paint. So it's important that we get some of these key points in here first, okay? That's gonna come down to around about there, and then that one is just slightly below. That runs to about there. So I'm picking out the ends of the streets there, those two markers there, and running, actually it probably runs more that way, and then that runs that way. So that's the stone wall. Okay, and getting our perspective right is going to be pretty important here today. So at the moment, I'm just going to rough it in, like so. And uh, we'll put in a little, little stone buildings here. Their little roofs, chimney, roof, sidewall. So this, this is going to require a little bit of uh, more drawing skill than maybe what we typically will do in uh, the Learn to Paint TVs. Then we've got trees there. But that's okay because we, you know, we have to test ourselves and, and find out where are we up to with our painting skills. Okay, so this is the front of the church. It's running, probably not that tall, it's running that way. That's where that brick wall is there. So we've got a section of it there. A little bit like so. Okay, there's a, a dark face there. It runs down to about there. It runs along there. Then it meets that portion of the roof there. something that continues up through there. There is a entry, it looks like there. So that brick wall needs to come down about there. Run that way. Okay, so that building there and they probably need to push that further back I suspect it's a little bit too close there okay and this is all in shadow in here got another window there another window there run that one there that continues out past there runs to about there run that to there and there's probably another window there. Okay, so this is an interesting little uh, subject because it is all in dark through here. So that dark runs right through there, like so. And then this is all lit up in here. So it runs through there. Let's just get the other little 
buildings in here. So down around about here we have one that's further off in the distance. It runs chimney there, sidewall there. Trees there just to block in that section. Another chimney there, that comes down more at that angle. And then you've got another building there like so. Okay, so those ones seem to be behind the church, that's no problem. Um, we just need to push these one back a little bit, I feel, to get this working right. And then perhaps we have something on that corner. Um, you know, this is a... Okay, let us now do step two, our blocking. I'm going to start off with these darks and we'll work those in. Then we might go into the sky. So we're going to really sculpt out our light. So I'm doing it that way. So this, all this dark shadow in here on the wall and in these distant buildings, um, it's a bluey dark bluey sort of color. So I'll take the blue and the red there. Okay, and I'm gonna add in a bit of this cadmium red. So I've got ultramarine blue, permanent crimson, yellow ochre, and a bit of cadmium red as well. And we'll just warm up that red there, that dark. Okay, now that's a little bit on the chocolatey side. I'll add more blue, and that should tone us back. So I want this to be on the blue side. If you have a good look at the photo, it's, you know, it's a bitumen road and in the shadow, it, uh, it definitely is tending more to the blue, something like that. So it's going to look really dark, which is perfectly fine. That's what we want. I'm just going to block this in and then we can add some details into um, the shadows here as we progress the painting. So you're gonna need a lot of paint for this. I mean, I'm using, looks like a 16 by 20 canvas here today. So to cover that in this dark, it's going to require, you know, a fair bit of um, paint in here. And if your paint's not flowing, you're gonna need a fair bit of paint so it doesn't dry out so that you can keep it moving. If it's not flowing, then you might need to add a medium to it or a little squirt of water, but don't overdo the water. Okay, I'm going to warm it up a little bit in this area that's closer to the viewer. So down in here, it's going to be darker, cooler tone, but over here, it's going to have a little bit more light hitting it, a little bit more warmth in that light. Okay, so something like that, okay. Now we come into that brick wall. So I still want that to be dark, but I'm gonna just push it to a stony color, ready yellow, a little bit more on the orangey side, okay. And that's gonna be this wall here. Still a dark though, you can see that. Now these buildings down here, just going to introduce a little bit of blue and a little bit of white into that. And um, just work that in there. So I'm just clumping these shapes together for the moment. Just a couple of little stone buildings there. Okay, and now I want to pick up a, a nice strong dark to contrast against the highlighted stone cottage here. Okay, so I've used a bit of the cadmium red and I'm going to run that down the front of this church here underneath the eaves here. Along there. 
in that. Okay, so I'll do that roughly, obviously. We can come back and we, we'll refine it and shape it and do all those good things. For the moment, I'm just trying to get some color down. So a little bit of bluey gray here for some trees. Don't fuss with these trees too much, hey? They're way off in the distance there. They provide a little bit of a It's going to be something like that. And it runs in through here. So this is the tarmac or the, the bitumen road where it's in bright sunlight. And it will look brighter against the dark. If we didn't have the dark there, it's not going to look as bright. Same with the building there. So if you want to get really strong highlights. Now, I'll come back and work out that, but if you want really strong highlights into your paintings, the key to that is to make sure you've got the darks in there at the right value. There is a patch of light breaking through there and going up there like that. Okay. Good, good. Now what we're going to have to do we're going to let this dry off obviously but in this road area here we're going to need to put some indications and marks um, in here rather than just leave it this big mass so i'm going to put a little corner gutter here and i'll put in some marks we'll put in a little bit of work into the stone wall and some gutters just a few little details in the shadow so that it doesn't look just like this big blocky mass i think that'll be important for us and, uh, you know, when we start to pull this church together, that's where all the detail is going to be, in the church. We don't really want a lot of detail anywhere else in this painting, okay? So I think our, our objective here now is to let this dry off. It's going along quite nicely. Um, let it dry off and then we will come back and we'll start to pull it all together. And I think it's going to make a nice little painting, something a little bit different from what we normally do little church in a village in Brittany in France. Um, beautiful part of the world there. While it's, get yourself up to this stage, let it dry off. While it's dry off, go and have a play around on Google Maps. I mean, that's all I did was went around Google Maps and found a nice little spot that I liked with the shadow and light. And then I just took a screenshot of it. So it um, gives you endless subjects to paint, right? Enjoy that. Get up to this stage. I'll take a break, let it completely dry off, and then I'll see you after the break for step three. Cheers. Okay, welcome back. Uh, now gonna go into step three of the more method of painting. This has had a chance to dry off and uh, it's looking pretty good overall. Pretty happy the way it's going. Couple of little things. I think we've got this wall running up a bit too high up that way and it probably wants to run more down that way. So there's a few little adjustments we'll need to make um, on this painting as we progress. But what we'll do now, we'll start working on this uh, church here. So I'll start off with a nice big helping of the titanium white there. So I've just got ultramarine blue, permanent crimson, yellow ochre. Okay, we'll get a little bit of that yellow ochre into that white. Probably need not so much of that yellow ochre. I just want a, a light tone that's got that warmth of the yellow ochre in there. And then what we'll do is we'll start to build up this wall here of uh, this face of the church, which is catching all the sun. We need to bring it down there, around the windows, leaving a little bit of that shadow under the eaves there. Okay. That goes there. That goes there. shadow in there but that goes to there okay and then down on that side also Okay, so 
with that in, we've now got this wall here and here. <laughs> this one's more of a stone wall, whereas this one is uh, definitely has that tone. I had a pinch of red in there, just to vary it up. Okay, we'll get the face of that. Okay, and that one's a stone one, so we'll go the red and the yellow. Something like that, a little bit of the blue in there just to grey it a little bit. And that lives on that wall there. Notice I'm doing this quite loosely, I'm not holding the brush up tight and trying to draw it in like a pencil. I want to make it look painterly. And uh, the way we do that is by um, the way we use the brush. So I'm using the brush very loosely, deliberately. Okay. That and that. Okay, so we're starting to build that up there. Now, I'll just come back to these previous brushes. A couple of opportunities of uh, applying that light tone on this wall here and the wall in there. So get to that tone there. Catching that, we can come to this slate turn here. Those little buildings start to take a bit of shape in the back there. I think we can start to see the uh, little shapes starting to emerge here now. It's getting more of a feel for what we're wanting. I might just now go in and get a little bit of greenery. A little bit of that yellowy green there. Light's coming sort of from here, so we'll just... Um, Add in a few little hints of light. It's always good to use the highlights on foliage to indicate where your light's coming from. And it sort of helps to tuck away these little uh, buildings here into that little corner of the painting. So that's all good. Take it. A little bit of a variation over here.
Okay, next thing for us to do will be just to get in some work into this uh, stone wall here, I believe. That needs a bit of a look and I'm going to just bring up the tone of it a little here and there. Um, I do think it runs up a little bit higher there, it's a bit too light. Okay, so I've got to get the values similar to what we've been working with. That's better. A whole lot of rocks and things, which I'm just going to indicate by leaving gaps in the wall there. There's a little bit in there as well. It really wants to run to about there, and it's going to run back that way to there. I'll go a little bit bluer on that side. So just by making these little marks, it's giving the indication that there's different rocks and sections in this wall. It's still a dark, so we're not losing the effect of the dark there. But now what I want to do is get darker still, but lighter than what we've already got here. And put in, see that's lighter than it's already there, and we'll just put in get back to my big brush here, and I'm going to try and get a lighter blue tone here. That's a little bit on the purple side. Definitely blue with that bitumen has a bluey feel. So that's definitely lighter. I wonder if it's too light though. Maybe we just need a little dry and see. That might work a bit better. It will dry back a bit darker, obviously. But yeah, I'm thinking that's working better. Already I can see that. So we're getting there to a nice little painting with the main sort of interest being that interplay between uh, darks and lights in here. Turn that into a sort of a, more of a feature spot there it's a little bit bright though so we'll take some of this blue and we'll just work that into it blue and the red you can see I'm mixing directly onto the canvas there just for something different and one little thing that we could do if we could take our little rigger brush and just here and there now the temptation is to overdo this but just here and there, I'll take this white, I'll mix it into that orangey tone there. I just want to clip a few little highlight tones here and there.
So the cross is sitting, sits up quite high in front of there. What about if I put it out over here, I think, just because there's a bit of open space there. So just put in your dark first. That'll create a bit of depth with that uh, front of that tree too. So, give the brush a bit of a clean. So I've got the dark side of that in. What's important there is we get a little bit of the light side in as well. So. And, uh, you know, it's the interplay between this dark that we have here and the lights hitting on the church and the other little small buildings, I think is the important part of this painting. So overall, I'm reasonably happy with that as a little demo. There's a bit in it, it's a little bit complex and the drawing component, getting the right perspective, that's going to, you know, test a, a few of you um, to get that right. But I'm confident that if you've been following all of our other previous um, you know, learn to paint TV and taking our courses and so on, that uh, you'll be up for the challenge with this one. Just take your time with it and work your way through it. And I'd say it's uh, more than achievable. So there you go. That's uh, the little church in the village in Brittany, France, taken from a Google map image. I was just playing around, walking my way through the streets, and I saw that light against the dark, and I thought, oh, that might make an interesting painting. And there it is, uh, not a bad little demo, it's something that I would consider working up into a uh, more complete, you know, painting in oils perhaps, uh, but definitely one to have a go at. I mean, it's a bit of fun if nothing else, and you might learn something from it. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Learn to Paint TV. I certainly enjoy bringing it to you. I look forward to bringing uh, next week's episode to you. In the interim, you can watch all the episodes of Learn to Paint TV at the web address underneath me here or you can go and take one of our free courses at learntopaint.academy. Again, the web address is here. And uh, go and enjoy all those, and I'll see you next week on Learn to Paint TV. Cheers.